Okay, on this particular video, we're going to talk about a thing named shopping cart abandonment. So, in other words, how many, what is the percentage of people who reach your shopping cart if you're running an e-commerce business? They get to the shopping cart and never finish their purchase. Or the, and how this is going to relate to PPC in this video is I'm going to talk about special campaigns that I run here at my firm for our clients that are able to decrease the amount of people who leave or in a, another way to say it is to increase the number of people who buy who reach the shopping cart and so that you end up with more profit from your PPC campaigns or any other you know traffic sources that you have that's driving new business in and would bring people to the shopping cart there that you have in the first place. And so on this particular video, before I get into those special campaigns uh, that I run virtually on every single uh, e-commerce site or business that I help manage on a guaranteed basis at our firm guaranteed PPC is um, a couple of small side things I'd like to go over about other things that other than this are the big things that really cause shopping cart abandonment. Of course, you can Google and find top reasons for shopping cart abandonment. And a lot of the reasons are, um, you know, related to the top ones. People, you know, the shipping was too high or they're just looking for a better solution. Now that stuff can be also handled, particularly by making sure that your copy and your pictures and stuff are better than your competition, way better. So when people get to the page, they're more apt to just be so excited to go through and of course your shipping costs. Um, you can play around with putting part of the shipping cost in with the price. Some people, to get more people in, will take the price and put it into the shipping. There's some games that can be played there. But in general, from an aesthetic standpoint on the shopping cart itself, there are a few things that I see a lot of people doing that the top pros in the like uh, user experience design industry and, and or also that work for uh, bigger e-commerce companies know because they've physically tested it themselves but um, far fewer smaller companies who don't have user experience uh, design designers or people conversion rate optimization experts that can actually specifically optimize a shopping cart uh, involve or related to these two things here uh, one simplifying Simplifying that shopping cart. Simpl and I actually put simplify, simplify, simplify. So with the meaning here that your shopping cart, if you look at it, is there anything on that shopping cart, and when I say shopping cart, on the page, the slash cart, the actual page as a whole that sh is shown to the user there that doesn't need to be shown. Uh, give a few different examples here of things that are typically that I see on small businesses uh, e-commerce businesses shopping carts that should not be there in which if they were removed they would get you a much better conversion rate and it all adds up so one individual thing might be not huge but it is when you add everything up together one of those things is the navigation now some people will want to allow people to go back to the other parts of their site but I can tell you you should uh, suppress the feeling that you think that it, People will just leave the site if they can't get back to the main site. It's I've seen it where it is true, but in, in a nutshell, that user should not, if they, if they do want to go back, the whole point of removing the navigation is so that they can go back. Uh, but even more of a reason that you do it other than that is you, if you have the navigation there, when people, they get if they get moving their eyeballs up and they see the navigation, then they may get the idea to go back to the main site and check something out. Maybe there's a cheaper price on another, another model. And the more times that they do that, the less likely it is that they are to buy because the longer it takes them to decide, the more likely it is that they're gonna make no decision at all. So therefore, that's why you remove that navigation. You don't wanna give any people, an, any person an idea. And the small people, small amount of people who would get disappointed that they can't go back so they just leave all together is not more than the amount of people that will just say, oh, I wish I could go back and I'll just buy. So you get away the pros and cons of everything when, when it comes to optimizing a shopping cart as is anything with your website, your campaigns, you should definitely try that out. And there's software like um, 
visual website, website optimizer, Optimizely, where you can actually test that, take off the navigation bar, split test it, and see what your revenue per visitor to that cart is with and without that navigation being there. So you don't even have to guess or take the risk of, you know, it'll, it'll change your, maybe your abandonment rate by two, three percent, four percent. You may lose a little revenue, but if, you know, obviously in, in a, with a thousand cart visits, you have enough data there that where if it does improve, like I say, which I'm going to say 90 percent sure that the, it will, then you've got that gain forever. And that's a business how you make it easier for yourself to become the titan in your industry. The other thing is, you know, like the sidebar. So there shouldn't be anything on the side. Oh, it should be full width on the page, just the shopping cart there. You can have all obviously margins, but no text or anything else that crap that needs to be there. The footers, you can have a footer on there that has maybe like some shopping cart logos or terms of service and privacy policy if it's not too um, dominant or obnoxious looking, but that's it. No navigation down there. No other crap that doesn't need to be there. And anything that would draw the eye there, definitely take that off. Um, and then, and I said, of course, everything. So anything else on that page? A lot of times people have a bunch of junk, like, you know, log into your account and contact us, all this other stuff above, above the primary navigation on the site that's there. Take all that stuff out, off as well. You should have logo. You should have... Maybe the telephone, you always want the, the telephone number there because if they do have questions, you want them to call because you can isolate the situation, the buying situation that you have with the buyer then. Um, you, of course, can have a live chat button if you want to do that. That's also not ba a bad idea. But in either case, if they, you know, you're giving them an option to basically get a question answered in a controlled environment where you won't lose the sale. And let the, cause you, if the user goes out and do stuff on their own, that's when you run into trouble. And then you have your cart with, and even in the side of the cart, it should just be basic. Here's the item, you know, quantity, price, check out, and then streamlined all the way through. But that's the type of thing that you can do. And then if you actually do all this stuff, and even if you don't have all of this stuff I mentioned, probably you'll get a 5% reduction in your cart abandonment rate just from that forever, of course. Beyond that, the second thing on my list I wanted to mention before I get into the PPC uh, card abandonment campaigns that I specialize in here is the trust symbol. So one thing I recommend you do is go to a, some different really big, so maybe in your industry, get, go to the biggest guy, uh, well, I also the biggest guy in your industry, go to their shopping cart and just see what kind of symbols that, that they have there. Do they have a lock? Do they have credit card symbols? But what you're looking for is like, the trustee certification, SSL certification. You'll notice a lot of times people use a lock. What I want you to do is then also go and check out a lot of bigger e-commerce sites and see the similarities in what they use. You'll commonly see a lock as one of the more common images you'll see there, um, like SSL secured on a padlock, um, malware protection, whatever. The lock is, you know, the trends that you see should tell you what people have data on, these bigger sites have money to test things like I just mentioned with the split test and to see what elements work versus not work. So you could just borrow their data. But, and then once you see what works, a lot of times you can't get those symbols on your site and replicate it without paying some subscription fee. What I've done is this cute little hack is uh, you can hire an illustrator to make a, you could see what the big site or the bigger player in your, your industry has, take a screenshot of it, go to a custom illustrator on Upwork or something like that and have them design something that looks like that but just says some BS thing, which whatever. It's all about, it's not about what it says and what it does, it's about the, the there's a psychological trigger that goes on in people's mind when they see a padlock there and something that looks trustworthy, so it has to be designed well, otherwise you go backwards in your results. That when they see it, they feel more secure, because a lot of it, of the abandonment, there isn't any reason. So those surveys that say, why, why did you abandon? They're not gonna tell you that they didn't feel secure, and that's why those are kind of faulty, but I would say, you know, 10, 20% just didn't feel right about, there was in their gut. 
And that kind of stuff is what that goes to help to fix, and that's why they're there, and why people they use them because obviously they know that their data that they use them. It's better than they don't use them, and because nothing's done to you know by accident on those you know huge uh, e-commerce sites. I can tell you uh, for the most part, and especially when you see stuff from site to site to site to site. So anyway, that's how you can get something done quickly, cheaply, and easy that replicates what the other e-commerce sites on the, on the web has found or just take the, my advice and you know use the padlock there because I know that that works well but one of the other things so I mentioned you can look at the biggest corporate sites and then replicate that one thing um, like I noticed Shopify does not let you customize with trust icons like that on your checkout which I don't understand why Shopify you don't do that if you're watching this you should definitely add that because it's basically you'd, you'd make more money so would everybody else but that's another reason why a open source shopping cart platform like Magento actually is better because if you're gonna lose money just by using one platform or, or another that that's bunk um, on the flip side if you use Magento it doesn't have as much you have to be you gotta have good a good developer and team that can keep stuff updated and patch holes and problems with the particular Magento releases and so on and so forth. With whereas Shopify, you have to worry less about that. So there's less risk for somebody that's more novice in managing websites. But at the same time, you can't customize it like a totally open source platform can, for, especially for stuff like this. So anyway, that's just another thing to think about. The trust symbols, if you don't have them now or you haven't fully optimized it and just didn't realize the importance of it. You can get another 5% off your, of your abandonment rate just from that. But moving forward, there's also, I'm going to get into the card abandonment PPC campaigns. And with this, in addition to your 5%, 5%, you're going to get on the reduction of the card abandonment rate with the simplification and trust symbols. Uh, the camera died. Okay, I'm going to start the video again. I, I put a new battery in, okay?
Anyway, now so that I'm back. So as I was saying about the uh, card abandonment PPC campaigns here, uh, in addition to your 5% and your other 5% for sim uh, simplifying your shopping cart and adding the trust symbols, optimizing for that, uh, full 10% you can get off of the, uh, commonly get off of the card abandonment rates by doing those two things. The card abandonment PPC ads now, when you add that in, adds another 20%. So you take, you know, all together, you're talking about 20% reduction in your cost, uh, your card abandonment rate if you do all these things. But anyway, so what are the uh, cart abandonment PPC campaigns now? Well, what that is, is essentially, it, well, it comes uh, as a part of, it has two parts associated with it. You have a, you build what is called a custom remarketing list. So if you don't know that, it's done through Google Analytics. And when your Google Analytics account is hooked up to your Google Ads account, and you can go in there and you can create a remarketing list for somebody who reaches the shopping cart, so a lot of times you just have to put slash cart, and then you can say contains slash cart, which means any of your cart pages, any part, um, but you know, or really you can just say exact. It could be you know in general, assuming that your cart page stays the same all the time. It just has to say contain cart in it. That what it'll do, what it will do is it will create a list of for you of people who reach your cart. And then in addition to that, um, you can create a negative audience um, type within that same remarketing customer remarketing list that says, I want to make a list of anybody who reaches the cart, but not people who purchase. So therefore, the people who abandon the cart, in other words, they're its own list. And then you can use that list to run ad campaigns in Google Ads in the, on the display network. So what I like to do by default, and it depends on the, how much you sell the product for in the sit, normal sales cycle window you have of the time people from the net, initial time that they begin to study what you sell and they buy it. And if you don't know, you can go and do the attribution reports in your Google Ads account or in Google Analytics and find out what that normally is. The more the product cost or service cost that you sell, the longer it's going to be during, for that uh, sales cycle window slash valuation period that they have. But in general, in average, if you're talking about, I don't know, a $100 to $200 item, you want to run the ad, this card abandonment ad that I'm going to show you how to run for about 30 days. And so basically what is going to happen is you're going to have this ad that's going to remind them, hey, you you know, you know, abandoned a cart, um, which I have the ad copy. You can just, and I have on my banner portfolio on guaranteeppc.com a bunch of these. So you can get some examples real life examples if you want them. But in, to keep it simple, it's got, your ad's gonna say, forget your order, question mark. Uh, get, and then you, here's a blank where you're gonna say what your incentive of you're gonna give them to finish their order through this ad that you're showing them. Get uh, blank by finishing your order now, exclamation point. If you don't put make do anything different than that, you should be able to get your 10% uh, decrease in card abandonment, abandonment rate just from that as well. So, and then you'll run, and that'll show up for people. I like to do that on Google's display network so that it'll show up on any website that they frequent, a, frequent a for, forum, a news site, wherever. I also like to run that ad on Facebook. So if they're on Facebook, that's the site they often go to. Or for the some of the select people that hit your cart that don't buy, that just go to Facebook mainly, it can show up there. So, but usually if, uh, I'll just do both. Let's just put it that way and I'll run for 30 days. The price is, you know, if it's a thousand dollar purchase, I might run it for, you know, 60 days, something like that. So you get the general idea. But anyway, in terms of the blank, what you offer these people, uh, so there's a fine line here. Obviously, you're saying to yourself, well, is it, if I have to give them something else to finish their purchase, is it worth it? Normally, what I'm offering to people is 5% off the order or whatever that is. You can say, Get 5% off your order, which is enough to excite them enough to do to take the action, and not enough, you know, to where you're gonna you're gonna be able to make more than that in terms of the card abandonment, uh, in terms of increase in revenue uh, from that. That where it all works out. So you can either put 5% off, or you can say 
get $10 off your order, $20 off your order, you can decide. And if you can't offer 5%, say get $10 off your order, and then that'll be like, you know, maybe 2%, and that could still work just as good. I recommend you test both ways, and, uh, do, and I recommend you still do this, even if you don't think you can offer 5%, like I said, and go for a flat amount. Or, you know, I've, I've, I haven't played around too much with other things like, and you can get free shipping if you normally don't offer it by clicking on that ad. But the idea behind it is it should, it should be interesting enough that when they see that ad and they're on Facebook and they're like, oh yeah, I forgot my order. Because uh, a lot of times people just say that they're going to come back or they're going to look at other ones and they never really decide because they got confused. And then they, they now remember the one that you looked at on your site. So, and along with that, if you could segment out your campaign so that if they were looking at product A, you have product A physically showing in the ad or service A, this also works for um, services that you had a, like a cart for as well. Um, that you have that one showing and then your get so that you're actually reminding them, hey, this is the product that you were looking at. It was from our company. You have your logos up there. Um, so they can remember, oh yeah, that was the one. I never made a decision, but that one was cool. And then the, and then you're, you're giving them the incentives so that they're thinking, if I don't respond and deal with this ad right now, I am not, I know I want to buy this at some point in the near future, and I'm not going to get my 5% off. Yeah, I better do it right now. And therefore, that's where your 10% decreasing uh, card abandonment rate comes from because you can show that same ad, which is super targeted, to people over and over and over again until they notice it, see it, the, they may see it and, and register it the first time, but then not take it seriously right away because they procrastinate again, or they may see it, but they don't know quite what it is, and they don't, it doesn't register as important right away, but the, you can show it to them a few times. Um, I will typically you'd be able to show some, you know, the same ad where it's, to where it's profitable and effective and maximum, to get the maximum effect from it, showing it to them around 50 times, spaced out over that 30-day period. So basically once a day. You want to do it now? No. Okay, tomorrow. Let's try again. Um, and then with that, I'll spend about 50 bucks then on the advertising for every person. So in terms of what then you have to offer here, uh, to fill the blank, I have found, you know, basically you offer the 5% off um, or you, the equivalent of, you can do, um, you know, whatever, f if it equals 55% off would offer, would, would it equal, and you have a, a small amount of products and it would equal about $5 off, you can actually fit, say $5 off. Sometimes that can work better for you, you can try it either way. I've never really tried it before with um, you know, stuff like if you offer ship, don't offer free shipping if they, click on this, it can get free shipping because the price discount always works anyway. But you could try that out. But in general, you know, the 5% and sometimes, you know, 5%, you can't offer that. So you can do as long as it's 2 or 3% and put not put 2 or 3% because that doesn't excite people enough at that point in time. But you can do a flat amount off. It can still work about the same. So you have to kind of balance between what you know, what's the least I can offer and still get, you know, click through rate on the ad. But um, I'll run the ad for a good uh, 50 to 100 times over that 30 day period of time. So they can see it a couple, two, three times a day until they buy. And it's cheap to do that because each time they see the ad it only costs about a penny. So you might end up spending about a dollar on ad spend to get that, um, get, more than, get that person to, to buy, actually showing it to them 50 times usually is enough. That's 50 cents, basically. You're not obviously going to get them every time, but you know, in general, with that formula and offering no more than 5% off, I found that you can still normally get about a seven to one return on your campaign with those two factors combined. And you can run some different scenarios. Obviously, if you offer more, you get a higher click through rate. Run the, and figure out what works for you. But my go-to is 5% off the order or we're doing the equivalent of 5% off in terms of a flat rate amount or we're doing a 
a consistent flat rate amount that equals two or three percent because the client can't quite do five percent and they have too tight of margins and running and showing the ad you know 50 to 100 times to them and then with that we're going to return we're consistently going to get that seven to one return i told you about sometimes it's closer to ten to one sometimes it's only you know five to six to one more often seven to one or greater and uh, good addition to what we're doing um, the and it also depends on market but that all said uh, i just want to give you a kind of perception on how the card abandonment rate affects how much money you're making with your campaigns and how much you're throwing away right now uh, effectively by not doing these things the ppc campaign and these other two things i mentioned up here uh, but and to get you motivated to do some of these things because i really would like to see you do it so assuming, let's say hypothetically, you started out with a starting uh, abandonment rate, which is about 66%. And by the way, that's about the industry standard for all e-commerce sites added together. If you were to do all three of these things, as I mentioned here for you, and you got a 20% reduction in the card abandonment rate, um, you'd have, uh, you know, basically on top of that, you'd have another 13% more sales go through out of the orders that you have. You have 79% is the way that math works out when you're done instead of the 66%. Then, which is a very fantastic card abandonment rate, but you don't normally obviously get that unless you all have your secret weapon, your little ad running here as well. So that what also what does that mean? So what if you, you had 10K um you had, let's say you had 10K worth of cart orders, and then of that, you made $6,666 after your 66% abandonment rate. After you do all these things, your same 10K of cart orders now makes you $7,900. So as you can see there, you have 1,300 extra free dollars that just landed on your lap. And all you had to do was to basically spend about you know, five to eight percent of the cost of the item to get that customer. And obviously, you know your your product margins can count. You know, you're still making forty percent on most of the things, and for the most part, that's a good deal, right? Um, you know, it depends on if, if you're drop shipping. Obviously, not, but it's hard to make money using PPC in general when you are drop shipping. So I'll leave that out of the discussion. And so, or, you know, obviously, and again, if you have tight margins, you can offer two or 3% off their order in terms of a flat rate, and you can show the ad to them just 50 times to get an even better return, but not quite as many people to do it and spend fit just 50 cents per person showing them the ad and only then ultimately spend three to 5% of the cost of the product in getting them and closing that gap and so that they do finish purchase purchasing their order at a higher rate than they were before which will get you about the same 10 percent maybe a, sh a little bit under that eight nine ten percent but close to it anyway with those kind of numbers because it's just a slight tweak in what you're doing that you know obviously matters a lot people they hear i just did this here because people hear 66 percent heart abandonment rate they don't really think you know um much of it but just try to put real numbers to paper here. And obviously, um, you know, you spend all that money to get them to the cart. Why not do this other stuff to actually get to finish the order as well? That's why I always run these cart abandonment campaigns. And I also just run them because they always work. Most clients, a seven to one return is good enough. To, you know, after accounting for the ad spend and after accounting for the discount, as I explain it to them and I'm able to break that down in terms of math on paper that they'll want to do it every time. So we do do it every time. And um, the same thing with this stuff. Usually if I, I'm at our firm, we guarantee our clients results up front to as a, a trial process and getting our clients, your PPC management clients. And I'll usually do mention these two things also right off the bat, which is why I'm mentioning them to you here to do because it, creates a big roadblock in getting our PPC to work if they got this high abandonment rate because they have their cart screwed up. And it's very easy to do, so I can just say, 
either fix this or let me fix it for you. And I'll do this for you. And then we just got a huge uh, roadblock out of the way in order to get our 8 to 1 return on our campaigns or whatever that we're looking for. 7 to 1, 8 to 1 return on our campaigns that we're looking for. So anyway, that in, in general is card abandonment, PPC campaigns, and how to optimize your shopping cart for a above average card abandonment rate for yourself on your for your e-commerce shop. And uh, at the very least, these things are, very, are completely free to do. This is free once you uh, uncover the additional your, the uh, revenue you're going to now have coming in and unlock once you've done it. So I, you know, of course, of course, encourage you to do that as well. Anyway, if you like this video, I have a lot of other videos on this channel just like it. You can go through and uh, check those out. I'd appreciate it if you subscribe, come out with money-making PPC strategies like this that I share virtually every day. You can also go to guaranteeppc.com, as mentioned earlier in the video, uh, that I have a great portfolio of different card abandonment rate ads there under our work. You can check those out, but on our blog, we have step-by-step -step PPC money-making strategies where I talk about how to build, I, in, in addition, a card abandonment rate um, ad examples on how to build a card abandonment ad from scratch and how to set up the, the, uh, the custom marketing audience that you need for this as mentioned and so on and so forth, as is step-by-step -step instructions for all the campaigns that I build, search campaigns, shopping campaigns, in terms of what we do that goes beyond what the average person is doing and which can guarantee our clients results that we need to get paid as well as my 15 years of PPC experience running e-commerce shops and so forth myself and for our clients here as well. So you can learn a lot there. But uh, And finally, I'll just add that if you have any questions about cart abandonment campaigns or just the, these two things about the cart uh, or your cart in general that you're unsure about, would like advice about, leave a comment down below. I'll absolutely get to your comment and answer your customized questions about this if you have any because uh, I sure want you to be uh, um, successful in what you're doing as well. So hope you enjoyed.